Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the British Number no. 7 Mark I Land Bayonet, uh, designed for the Leonfeld Number no. 4 rifle, but adopted for the uh, Sten Mark V submachine gun. Now, 176,000 of these were made. The first 1,000 were made by the Wilkinson Sword Company in 1944, uh, in sort of a trial and error perfecting the blade uh, batch. From 1945 to 48, production moved to another four manufacturers because uh, Wilkinson stopped um, military contracts. So the four manufacturers were BSA, the Birmingham Small Arms uh, uh, Company, or Limited. They made 25,000, although they originally had a contract to make 100,000, I believe. Uh, Elkington and Co. Limited in Birmingham made 20,000. Again, they had a contract for 100,000. The Royal Ordnance Factory in Poole made 30,000, and the Royal Ordnance Factory in Newport also made 100,000. Uh, so in 1944, when the number five jungle carbine bayonet was adopted, it was um, it was a hit straight away. Essentially, uh, the knife bayonet was back. Uh, prior to that, the number four rifle had been using a spike bayonet. So that's the uh, number four Mark One, Two, and Three spikes. I've got a number two here, and they weren't particularly uh, cared for. So there are requirements made to develop a knife blade uh, bayonet for the number four rifle. And uh, it's obviously a bit tricky because number four has the socket just here, the reversible socket. So on the 21st of uh, January, 1945, the number seven was approved uh, for the Sten Mark V. After the war, when Wilkinson stopped um, the manufacturing, obviously the four manufacturers I just listed before took over. In October 1947, it was decided that the number seven is required for all number four rifles uh, to be made in the future. However, this didn't last very long because the number nine bayonet was introduced, which was just a socket with the blade, without the handle, without the rotating mechanism. Uh, much simpler, much less complicated, and probably much less expensive to manufacture as well. So additional contracts were made, but they were short-lived, and I don't believe they were fulfilled. Now, the number seven was not widely used. It was only used on the Sten Mark V and some special units used it on the number four rifle. Uh, it was, however, used for ceremonial purposes all the way through to the 1970s. So the construction of the blade, we've got a nice number five style, uh, Bowie style blade with a deep fuller. Then we have a number, style, number five style uh, cross guard with a hole here and a nice big muzzle ring, uh, which is a bit odd. I'll explain why in just a second. Then we've got a composite, uh, some kind of material composite uh, handle. These come in red, brown, orange, and black, uh, depending on what chemicals they use to make them with two screws retaining it. Then the pommel is the actual mount to the rifle. And we've got a button here that uh, is used to retain that. So you push it forward and you can rotate your socket. The socket's the same as the number four, mark one, two, and three. It's just a push button just here. And the push button can be disassembled by sticking a punch through this hole here, depressing, I'm not sure if you can see it, that uh, piece there and then the whole thing slides out. The scabbard itself is just a Wilkinson uh, number five scabbard with a brass throat, nothing special about that. Now in terms of uh, the muzzle ring being a bit useless, so if you're familiar with the number four rifle the barrel comes through the hole over here, protrudes out there a little bit, and then you've got this nice big space here where the barrel doesn't actually go through the muzzle ring. The muzzle ring is just sort of there for show. Now, one of the issues they had, I've read um, accounts that uh, rounds have actually bounced off the button here, gone up and struck the uh, muzzle ring. So it wasn't actually deemed safe to fire. I haven't been able to verify that. Uh, it's just been a couple uh, a couple of people commenting about it online. So I'll take it with a grain of salt. The, uh, the feel of the bayonet's quite good. 
The um, size of the grips, not too bad. Feels good in the hand, good weight, uh, just as it looks. Now, in terms of markings, uh, this one only has markings on either side of the Ricasso. So on one side, which side's this? We've got, sorry, very hard. It's, it's actually double stamped. So it's got some previous stampings that have been stamped over the top. So it says number seven, mark one slash L for land. Underneath that, there are some other markings which appear to have been always ground off. Um, I believe this might have been a prior number five blade that was repurposed for a number seven, and those are the original markings from the number five. That's the only reason I can come up for the uh, double markings there. On the other side, we have a broad arrow acceptance mark just there in the center. And to the side of that, upside down, difficult to make out, but what it says is uh, M slash 78, and that's the manufacturer's marking for Elkington. So if this was a pull, it would have a circle with a P inside it. If it was a BSA, it would have an M for Mike, 47 Bravo. And um, if it was the Royal Ordnance Factory uh, Newport, I don't actually know what um, what markings it would have. Now, if I've missed anything in this video, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to update the description or even redo the video if need be. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.